Bringing home a county course of puppy is not only an exciting time in your life, but it can also be a very stressful time for you and your family. Let's go over the first things to do when you bring your county course of puppy home to reduce the stress on you and your family. This extensive guide will help set the stage for success when raising your new puppy. We will go over training, exercise, play, sleeping, diet, and supplements for your county course of puppy. Every item I discuss in this video will be linked in the description box for easy access if you are interested in anything we talk about here today. This video is not sponsored, but I am an affiliate with most of the things I suggest in this video and every item I use myself and highly stand behind. Before we get into this video, I want you to comment below the number one concern you have with bringing home your new puppy and if I don't cover it in this video, I can do a future video on the subject. Make sure you guys are subscribed for more dog training information so you too can raise the canine companions of your dreams. Bringing home your Cane Corso puppy. When you get your Cane Corso puppy, you are removing them from the only life they have ever known and giving them an entirely new life. That change can cause a lot of stress on your new puppy. Imagine being pulled away from your mother, father, brothers and sisters by strangers and swept away to a new unfamiliar location. It has always been my stance to create the environment you want for your puppy from the moment you have them. Let me use myself as an example here. When we got Bruce Wayne, Kara wanted to take two weeks off from work to spend time at home with him so we could adjust. I explained to her by doing so, you're gonna cause more long-term stress and anxiety in the puppy because you're taking them from one life to give them a new life they must adjust to then once again, completely changing that life for a third time. This will cause a lot of confusion in your Cane Corso puppy. The puppy will have just adjusted to this new life with you being home all the time with them, giving them extra attention, and now you're going to completely change their life and their routine once again. Once you return to your normal living and go to work, this can cause massive stress and anxiety in your Cane Corso puppy. Kara understood my stance and agreed that we live life as normal as we possibly could with the routines to create less stress and anxiety on our Cane Corso puppy. From day one, when you have your Cane Corso puppy, give them the life you're going to be giving them in the long run. That includes your sleeping arrangements. Do not sleep with your Cane Corso puppy. Let them sleep in a set room that you have for them. Yes, they're going to whine and cry for a few nights but they will quickly adapt to their new life and it's going to be much easier raising your Cane Corso puppy without the confusion they get from multiple life changes during this critical part of their life. Crate training your Cane Corso puppy. Crate train your Cane Corso puppy from day one. A crate will quickly become your Cane Corso's safe space, a place to rest without worry, and a place that they can call their own. A responsible dog owner will utilize a crate to assure their puppy is safe at all times. You will want to introduce your Cane Corso puppy to the crate in a manner that shows how fun this new space is. Do this by placing high reward treats in the crate and trying to get them to walk into it on their own. Once they immediately step inside the crate, Give them a verbal praise, such as good boy or good girl, so they begin to learn communication with you. Place toys in the crate, get inside the crate yourself if you can fit, all to show them this is a happy, fun, safe space. After some success getting them to walk in and out of the crate, end your session and move on. Later that day, repeat the process and gently close the door while they eat their treat inside the crate. Open it up as they come forward so they do not feel locked in and scared. You want to treat this process very delicately. To build their understanding, you can also say crate when they walk in, which over time will be your command when you want them to go inside their crate. A crate is an extremely valuable tool for when you get your new puppy. Puppies are curious, and unless you have eyes on them at all times, they can quickly get into trouble eating something dangerous, inflicting damage on themselves, or getting into mischief, possibly chewing up your furniture or favorite pair of shoes. You can't always have eyes on your Cane Corso puppy, and in a matter of seconds, they can get into something they should not and injure themselves in the process. I was just at the emergency vet hospital, and there was a puppy there waiting to be seen because he ate some AA batteries. All it takes is seconds for your dog to swallow something that could kill them. Your new puppy's crate should be utilized for sleeping at night, when you go to work and leave for the day, naps if your puppy is needing a nap, and for any time you can't have eyes on your puppy. This not only sets up your puppy for success in their training, it sets you up for success. Every failure a puppy has is a slight setback. If your puppy chews your shoes when you're not looking, you come back in the room five minutes later to find a shoe in your puppy's mouth, it's now too late to correct that behavior, and now at that moment, the puppy thinks that they can chew said object. A crate should be sized to where your puppy can comfortably lay down and stretch out, but it should not be big enough where they can wander around in it. Typically, dogs will not go to the bathroom where they sleep, and if the crate is too large, 
they may go to the bathroom in it because there's so much extra room. I recently started using impact dog crates and they come in multiple sizes. I know crates can be expensive, but it's one of those items that you can have for life. Personally, if I was to get a new puppy, I would get the crate size I would have them using as an adult and I would opt for dividers to put in the crate, which will make the space smaller to fit your puppy. Then you can adjust the dividers as the puppy grows and you're only having to buy one crate. The reason I suggest impact dog crates is because of their durability, their lifetime warranty, and their portability. I utilize the collapsible model as it's extremely portable and you can put it together in 60 seconds. If you travel with your puppy, something like this can be so beneficial because in seconds you can flatten it out and it fits easily in your car or SUV. Check out the description box for links to the crate I utilize for my dogs. When you leave your Kane Corsa puppy home alone in their crate for the day while you go to work, it can be stressful for not only yourself but for your puppy. Separation anxiety is very prevalent in a lot of dogs and it is our duty to help keep this to a bare minimum. Leaving your puppy with a special toy and a high reward chew treat in their crate will help keep them occupied and tire them out mentally. On top of that, I've created a series of dog anxiety videos that are free here on my YouTube channel that you can leave playing on your TV or your laptop for your puppy to watch so they don't feel alone while you leave for work. These videos range from 5 hours to 15 hours long so you can assure your puppy will be comforted as you're gone and not feel alone. I will leave the links to those videos in the description box for you to easily access. Save the videos to your playlist that way you have quick access to them for your dog. Even if you do not think you're ever going to need a crate, I guarantee there will be at least one time in their life where they need to be crated and if they're not accustomed to a crate, this can be a nightmare scenario for your dog. If your dog has to get any type of surgery, for example, they're going to be placed in a crate. If you have to travel, you're most likely going to have to crate your dog. Do not create a stressful scenario for your dog by not crate training them as a puppy. Diet for your Kane Corsa puppy. Diet is extremely important in all living creatures, and when you have a Kane Corsa puppy that is growing extremely fast, you want to assure they're getting the best nutrition they can, and at the same time, you want to try to control the rate of their growth. A puppy that grows too fast is a puppy that can have severe joint issues once they're fully grown. Overfeeding your puppy will accelerate their growth, but they will not grow any larger than they would if you were to feed them the proper amount. They will just reach said size quicker. What will happen by overfeeding is it will grow faster than the joints will allow them to support and they can even become overweight. The puppy's joints aren't ready to handle the weight and you can impact your Kane Corso's joint integrity for life. I always recommend a whole food species appropriate raw diet for any breed of dog. There's no getting around that whole unprocessed foods will be the absolute best thing for your puppy. You can feed a raw diet from the moment you have your puppy. Joey Justice was raw fed even before we picked him up at seven and a half weeks old. Just a few benefits of a raw diet are better digestion with less GI issues, less allergy issues, better skin and coat, your dog's going to shed far less, more healthy clean energy, better teeth, stronger joints, tendons, and bones. I do have a raw food masterclass linked in the description that will teach you everything you need to know to feed your dog a raw diet. You can transition any dog at any age to a raw food diet. If you do not want to feed a raw food diet, I suggest researching kibble formulas. You want to assure the main ingredient in your kibble is a meat-based product and preferably not chicken. A lot of dogs do not do well on chicken and that even includes when raw feeding a dog. Another thing to look into in the kibble is to see if there are any recalls in the past couple of years and if so, why they were recalled. There seems to have been a lot of recalls with a lot of kibbles over the past couple of years. So you want to assure you are finding a company with good manufacturing processes. Dogs are creatures of habit, so a consistent feeding schedule will benefit you very much with your new Kane Corso puppy. You want to feed your puppy four times a day from 6 to 12 weeks old. After that, you can start feeding your puppy three times a day until they're around six months old, then you can cut back to two times a day. Puppies require a higher caloric intake than an adult due to their rapid growth, and spreading out their feedings multiple times a day just helps ease their digestion. Supplements for your Kane Corso puppy. Supplementation is something I've always felt was needed as a safety net with my dogs. I feed them a nutritious whole food raw diet, but even then they can benefit from certain supplements. There are two supplements I have given my dogs throughout their entire life, including puppyhood, and that is a well-formulated joint supplement 
and a well-formulated multivitamin. For your Kinecursor joints, I suggest NuVet Joint for their joint supplements, and for their multivitamin, I suggest to use NuVet Plus. We have used both of these supplements daily for over six years now. You'll find the link to these two supplements in the description box. We signed up for AutoShip, so we never run out of these two supplements, and we give it to the dogs with their breakfast every morning. Both of these supplements were given to them as puppies as well. Joint care is extremely important in all dogs, but especially giant breed dogs such as the Cane Corso, and how you treat your puppy's joints will have a big impact on the integrity of their joints as they get older. Bedding for your Cane Corso puppy. Continuing with joint care is giving your Cane Corso puppy a proper place to sleep and lay down, utilizing a bed that will support their joints through growth and beyond. For this, an orthopedic dog bed is an absolute must. There are many orthopedic dog beds out there, but I can only speak to the ones that I use because I fully understand the quality and durability of the ones that we have. We use the orthopedic big barker beds, which are linked in the description box. We have a total of four of them because we want to assure wherever the dogs are in the house, they have a mattress that will support their joints for them to lay on. We have one in the crate, we have two in the living room, and the fourth one is specially designed for an SUV. We've had some of these for six years now, and I can attest they hold up to the test of time. Bruce is 155 pounds, Justice is around 140 pounds, and they're still as good as new. Kara and myself land them all the time as well when we watch TV just because of how comfortable and supportive they are. Dogs sleep most of their lives. It is imperative you give them a supportive mattress so they can keep their joints as healthy as possible. Also, sleep's imperative for so many of the body's functions for both humans and dogs. Sleep is where our bodies and our dog's bodies repair themselves. If your dog is not getting restful sleep, they may not be fully repairing themselves, and over time that can lead to degenerative diseases. Collars and leashes. I am not a big fan of harnesses because they tend just to become pulling devices, but as a puppy, a harness can be a great thing to utilize. Linked in the description box, you will find a wide array of harnesses, collars, and leashes and you get 10% off all of those items using code JASON at checkout. At this stage of life, you're not doing a lot of formal obedience training. There's no need to go overboard in this department. Bare minimum, you're gonna want a leash, a collar, and a long line. One thing I like to do when I get a puppy is always have a leash and collar on them in the house. I prefer a long line leash for this. That way, when you have eyes on your puppy, but they're still 20 feet away from you, you can still correct them with the leash and collar if they do something they should not be doing. Puppyhood is really about building up that communication between you and your Cane Corso. For example, if your Cane Corso gets into something they should not be getting into, you can give a properly timed light collar pop with a long leash coupled with a no to start teaching them right from wrong. Puppy toys. Puppies are curious creatures and they also get bored very easily. You will want a wide variety of toys for your puppy to keep them occupied. In the description you will find a link to a bunch of toys I suggest for a puppy and using code JASON will get you 10% off all of them. I suggest getting a variety of toys for your Cane Corso puppy. A hard chew toy that is designed just for chewing such as the Fenrir Hammer or Dragon Egg. Both of these you can stuff with treats or create recipes to freeze inside to give your Cane Corso puppy and that will give them hours of mental satisfaction. I suggest a tug toy that is only to be used for tug and lastly some plush toys for your dog to carry around with him such as the Fenrir Wolf. At puppyhood you're setting the stage for lifelong behaviors. With that being said if you don't want your puppy to rip apart plush objects don't let your puppy rip apart plush toys. Give them a plush toy to teach them they can't rip it apart. No tug with plush toys, no sitting there pulling at the fabric with plush toys. When you see that behavior once they understand your no command, take it away with a no attached. Then give it back to your puppy. If your Cane Corso puppy repeats that bad behavior, repeat the command and take it away and then once again give it back. If they continue with this bad behavior, take it away and give them a chew toy and then start over a different day with this procedure. Over time your dog is going to begin to understand that they cannot destroy plush objects. This isn't going to happen overnight, but if you're 100% consistent in your actions, they will eventually catch on and you will have an adult dog that does not destroy plush toys. Training commands. I'm sure you're eager to train your Cane Corso puppy to be the perfect canine companion. I have a lot of materials that teach you how to get just that, but remember, your Cane Corso is still just a baby. It's okay to work on them on commands, but you can't expect the world from them. Cane Corso puppies are extremely smart and very easy to train. Your Cane Corso puppy has no clue what the English language is. Because of this, I like to speak dog 
when I first get a puppy for the corrections. A puppy may not know what no or yes means, but they surely know what a growl means. If your puppy is doing something they should not be doing, give them a properly timed growl to get them to stop. Something as simple as that can be extremely effective, and I've done this with my past few dogs I've had. Even as they become an adult, I continue to practice this with them. I can give a very low growl and they will immediately stop what they're doing. This is a very simple yet effective way to communicate and correct your Connie Corso puppy. One great inexpensive resource to use for training your dog is my ebook, The Perfect Canine Companion, The Non-Dog Trainer's Guide to Dog Training. I've had thousands of success stories from people implementing my philosophies. My ebook is all philosophy based, but it really gets individuals to understand how to properly raise their dogs. It will not teach you how to teach your dog to sit or stay like our online courses do, but it is a great read for anyone that has a dog or plans on getting a dog. The ebook's linked in the description box. We also offer a lot of online, in depth dog training courses in video form. Those courses will teach you everything you need to know when it comes to training your dog. The perfect puppy course, for example, will get you set up for success. And then after that, you can follow through and take the canine boot camp, the perfect canine companion course, which will deep dive into more advanced obedience. You can save 10% on all of these courses using code Jason and you have lifetime access to them. There are certain commands you want to work with with your canine course of puppy and things that you must teach them. We already discussed working with a growl for a correction. You can also start to work on yes, no, sit, down, and bathroom. Most people don't teach your dogs the bathroom command and it's such a valuable command once your dog understands it. If you're in a hurry, if it's freezing outside, if it's pouring rain and you know your puppy has to go to the bathroom, if they can go on command, it will make your life far more pleasurable. To do this, all you have to do is the moment your dog goes to the bathroom, the very instant pee or poop starts to come out of them, say, good bathroom. Then immediately upon completion of their bathroom, give them a treat. Over time, they begin to understand what bathroom means. One of the most powerful things to do with your puppy when training them is praise. Praise is often overlooked as people usually focus on what not to do with a no or a growl in my case. What is missed is the constant praise. You not only need to communicate with them what you don't want them to do, you need to communicate with them the behaviors that you like. Your puppy sits, say yes or good boy. This communication goes far beyond what you ask of your Connie Corso puppy. You should be praising every action you like, even if you don't ask of it. Your puppy calmly sits by your side politely, say good boy. Your puppy lays down to relax, good boy. You're always training your dog whether you realize it or not. You're training them in a way you want them to behave or inadvertently training them in a way you do not want them to behave. You're their leader first and foremost. You're not their mother and their father. Lead them with love and everything is going to fall in place. Connie Corso Puppy Socialization Connie Corso Puppy's crucial socialization stage ends at 12 weeks of age. All breeds should be socialized for life but that first 12 weeks is critical in their development. You'll want to put them in as many positive situations as possible. A Connie Corso is a guardian breed by nature, so it's your job to teach them right from wrong. Without seeing the world, they can't understand what is a threat and what is not. You should get your puppy around hundreds of people by 12 weeks of age. By 12 weeks old, our Connie Corso puppies have been socialized around 1,000 people or more. And it's not as hard as you may think it is to reach this number. Make sure to check out my socialization videos for tips on how to reach this goal. Not everyone has to be petting or meeting the dog face to face but they need to be observing everyone. Short people, tall people, skinny people, obese people, children, senior citizens, people in wheelchairs, all races of people, people with canes, people with hats, people with masks. The list goes on and on. Dogs perceive things different than humans and it is important to always remember that. You should be bringing your Connie Corso puppy to as many different locations as possible. Find pet friendly stores to bring them to coffee shops, parks where dogs aren't going to the bathroom for your puppy's safety, the vet prior to an actual checkup, Lowe's, Home Depot, and craft stores tend to be dog friendly. We have a socialization masterclass that will help you fully understand how to socialize your Connie Corso puppy and that's linked in the description box and you get 10% off using code Jason 
And on top of that, here in this channel, as already mentioned, we have tons of socialization videos free for you to access. Proper socialization will set your dog up for success as they mature and become adults. And Connie Corso's drastically change in personality from puppyhood to adolescence and then again as adults. And you want their change to be a positive one. The more situations they are put into socially, the more adaptable they become as they get older. And then once they're mature in a situation that they may have never been in, they will have a far higher probability of navigating that situation quickly and adapting to it. Conde Corso Pet Insurance. Pet insurance for your Conde Corso is an absolute must in my eyes. You can set up pet insurance prior to getting your Conde Corso puppy and I suggest doing just that. You will want to research different insurance companies to find out what best suits your needs. Pet insurance is not cheap with the Conde Corso, but it can save you a lot of money and possibly save you from going into debt. Bruce Wayne just had an emergency surgery where he's hospitalized for four days and that one bill was over $6,200. Our insurance covered 80% of the cost, making that bill much more manageable. I've seen cases where individuals have spent upwards of $60,000 on their dog for surgeries, and luckily they had pet insurance to help with that. Without the pet insurance, they most likely would not have been able to have the procedures done on their dog to save their life. Even if you think you can just set aside every month in case you ever need to have a surgery on your dog and not opt for insurance, the money set aside most likely won't cover the cost of your pet's health care and it could put you in a very bad financial spot. Once you get a dog, you sign up to take care of them through their entire life, through the good and the bad. I am not one to support GoFundMe cases for dogs that need surgery because the owner didn't have the foresight to get insurance to care for their own. I know that sounds cruel, but everyone has the option to get pet insurance. Pet insurance companies have many different plans that you can work with. Just research different companies and their plans to find out what will best work for you and your canine companion. Connie Corso Puppy Exercise Cunny Corso puppies grow very fast, and add in the fact that it's a giant breed that grows even faster than the average, you have to take the utmost care of your puppy when exercising them so you don't create long-term joint damage. As you've already noticed in this helpful guide that I really promote proper joint care, and this is why we need to go over proper exercise for your Cunny Corso puppy. We've already covered supplements for their joint care, bedding for joint support, proper diet for strong tendons and joints, but even with all of that, you must be very careful with exercise. The average Conde Corso's growth plates aren't closed to around 18 months of age, and some even longer than that. As puppies Bruce Wayne and Joey Justice were growing at a rate of 5 pounds a week, that's a lot of weight to support on growth plates and tendons and bones that aren't fully developed. With that being said, do not over-exercise your puppy. The best form of exercise for your new puppy will simply just let them freely play running around the yard. No forced walks, no fetch, and no jumping up and down on furniture. For the first month to six weeks, I would not allow my puppies to walk up and down stairs. Instead, I would carry them. I would not allow them to jump up and down in furniture for months. I would not take them on a forced walk until they're around 12 weeks of age. And even then, I kept the walks very short no longer than 10 minutes. Understand that your Conde Corso puppy's joints and the future of their joints are in a very delicate, critical time right now during puppyhood. So use common sense when giving your puppy exercise to assure they can live a long, healthy, pain-free life. We have tons of Conde Corso breed-specific information on this channel as well as a lot of dog training information that will help you raise the dog of your dreams. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Training courses, supplements, my ebook, leashes, collars, toys, everything we discussed in this video will be linked in the description box for easy access to help you raise the canine companion of your dreams. Until next time, Bruce Wayne, Joey Justice, and myself, we'll see you later. Peace.